You ready? Nothing. 
stand up, raise your hand, oh, I can do that, that's no big deal. But as the cost started to rise for the iPad, the reward didn't seem so great anymore. And so ultimately, all you decided is, you know what? What this iPad is going to cost me is not worth the reward. Well, this week, we're going to be looking at the cost of what it means to follow Jesus. And the reward of what happens when we do follow Jesus. So we're going to be sticking with this thing all week for the biggest loser. But to get us started off, I want to show you a little story. It comes from Luke 14, 26 through 32. Here's what's going on. Jesus has been traveling around doing miracles, doing all these awesome things. But something's happening. There's this big crowd starting to fall. And this is what Jesus says. It says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose the king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he has, whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, anyone who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. So this big crowd is following Jesus. They're like, hey, this is sweet. This Jesus guy does all these miracles, does all these things. Jesus turns around and looks at it and says, okay, you need to count the cost of what it's going to be if you want to be my disciple. Here's the cost of what it means. And he says, it's time for you, crowd, to figure out if you really want to be a part of this. And that's why he gives the analogies of the king and building a tower. It comes with a price, my friends. It comes with a very real price. And this week, myself included, we need to take time and really ask ourselves, am I really willing to pay the price to be a disciple of Jesus? Because as we're going to see this week, the reward is awesome, but the price is steep. So we're going to look at what it costs. And the main theme verse that we're using for this week is the theme verse that's on all the trainer shirts. Hey, you know what we need to do real quick? We need to give a shout out to all the trainers. Aren't these guys awesome? Let's give them and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Jesus spells out for us very clearly in this passage the cost of following him. And we're going to be looking at verse 24 for a little bit tonight. I want to read it one more time for you. Jesus says, For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. I love it. Jesus is not having people guess. He says it's either one way or the other. You're either going to keep your life for yourself and you're ultimately going to lose it, or you know what? You're going to give up your life for me and ultimately you're going to save it. There is no middle ground with Jesus and being a disciple, people. You're either in or you're out. You're either going to keep your life for yourself and do what you want to do, or you're going to give it up for him and let him do with it what he wants. There is no middle ground. That's the beauty of Jesus. 
Because he doesn't want just half of you or a part of you or a little bit of you. He wants it all or he wants nothing. But the choice is yours. And you might think, like, really? Like, Jesus really wants me to be willing to give up my life to follow him? Some of Jesus' very first disciples, the first men that followed Jesus, every single one of them died for their faith, except for one who died of natural causes. Out of these 12 that followed him, the original 12, Judas betrayed him, he hung himself. That was his own choice. Ten out of the other eleven were crucified, beaten to death, stoned, boiled in oil. They died because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So when Jesus says, hey, you need to be willing to lose your life for me, he's not joking around. And this is not just a good analogy. He's serious. If you're going to follow me, you've got to be willing to lose it all. And I know sometimes this can be hard. And please hear me, I'm not saying we have to be perfect when we come to Jesus. But we do need to be willing to say, God, whatever I have is yours. Take it all. And then when we come to that point, Jesus is all right. You're my disciple. Make no mistake about this, friends. This isn't easy, and it's not always fun. But the reward that we're going to look at, you can't touch it with anything. Because it is lost. But the cost is high. Here's what I need you to do right now. We're going to play a little game. You like games? Here's what you have. We are going to play a little quick game of Rochambeau, rock, paper, scissors. All right, here's what's going to happen. I need everyone to stand up right where you're at. Stand up. Stand up. All right, here's what's going to happen. You're playing the best out of one. You're doing one, two, three, shoot. All right, not one, two, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. You're playing one. Gets a book.
But whoever loses his life for me will save it. Here's the point, my friends. Each one of you has a dollar bill that you're holding. It's called your life. You get the opportunity. It's yours. You own it. It's up to you. You can keep that for yourself and say, I'm doing what I want to do. It's mine. I've earned it. You know what? That's the beauty of it. You can keep it. But you know what? Jesus is standing right over here saying, you know what? I've got something so much better for you. But in order for you to get what I want to give you, you're going to have to be willing to give up your life. But just like Jared said, when you actually look and see what Jesus is offering you, you're going to be like, are you kidding me? I get 10 bucks instead of one. Yes, it comes with a price, but it is completely worth it. So my question is for you. Are you willing to give up your dollar bill to get 10? Because the reward is worth it. The reward that you can get for giving up your life for His, simple. A relationship with your Creator. A powerful, living, active, breathing, life-changing relationship. You might say, Josh, what's that? That doesn't sound that great. Oh yeah? That one that you can have a relationship? He created everything you see. He is beyond time. He is beyond everything you know. He can teach you everything that you need. He wants to love you and pour His grace onto you. And then at the end of your life, you get to spend eternity in Him with Him. And real quick, let me talk about heaven. Some people think, hey, heaven's going to be great because this is a place where everything's great. I can do whatever I want. I can eat all the ice cream I want. You know what? That's part of heaven. You know why heaven's so awesome? Yeah, there's streets of gold, there's happiness, and there's all this stuff. That's not the main point of heaven. The main point of heaven is you get to be in a perfect relationship for eternity with your Creator. That's what makes heaven so awesome. The rest of that stuff is great and we're going to enjoy it, but that's a byproduct. That's what comes second. The awesome part of heaven is you get to be face to face with God forever. That's why heaven rocks. I'm going to enjoy those streets of gold in that mansion. That's going to be sweet. But my main thing when I get to heaven, I'm going to be like, I'm seeing my God. Because that's why I'm there. But you know what the sweet thing is? You do not have to wait to get to heaven to start experiencing that relationship. You can experience it right now. But to do that, you got to be willing to say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. And hand over your dollar bill. And he can come into your life and change everything. And you can be in a relationship with the God who knit you together inside of your mother forever. But it comes at a price. But here's the beauty of it. The other price, if you would just say, hey, I want to keep my dollar bill, I want to keep my life, and I want to do what I want to do. You know what? That also comes with a reward. The reward for that is a little place that Jesus actually got set up, not for you and me, but for the angels that rebelled, that rebelled against him. And that place is called hell. And some people think hell is going to be so horrible because it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth and fire. You know what? That's true. But that's secondary. The reason why hell is going to be so bad is because you will be eternally separated from your Creator forever. That's what makes hell so bad. But the beauty of it is right now, my friends, we're not in heaven or we're not in hell. We're standing here right now holding our dollar bill and God saying, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to keep it for yourself or are you going to give it to me? Because whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he's going to be the one who keeps it. And I know for some of you, maybe you might be saying, Josh, you know, like, I really need to give up my life. Like, you're serious about this. Jesus tells one story. It's awesome. He says, there will be many people on that day. He's talking about the day of judgment when we all die and we stand before him. He said, there's going to be people on that day that say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not do all of these great things in your name? And he said, I'm going to tell them plainly, I never knew you. 
because you did not do the will of my Father. Just because we go to church and just because we go to youth group does not mean we're getting into heaven. Just because we give money does not mean we're getting into heaven. Just because we do good works and say the right things does not mean we're getting into heaven. The only way that we get into heaven, get into heaven, is if we're willing to do the will of the Father. And you know what the Father wants from me and from you? He wants your daughter. Not so he can take and keep it for himself, but so he can give you something better. But it comes at a price. That's the cost. And that's the reward. The choice is yours. What I'm going to have you do now is I'm going to have you watch the story of three cars. <clears throat> and I think when you watch this clip, you're going to get a better idea of what it means to be willing to lay down your own wants, desires, hopes, dreams, and your life so that you can gain a bigger reward. Far beyond what you ever imagined. So go ahead and check this out. Because when I watch that video clip, it reminds me that, you know what, he 
he really was willing to give up something, his life. His life was wrapped up in getting that pissing cup, but he was willing to lay that down. And in the end, he got a way bigger reward for giving up his life. The cost of following Jesus is high, but the reward is so much higher. And I want to remind you guys, like we started in the beginning, if you want to follow Jesus, it's not about just raising your hand. It's not about just standing up. It's not about just coming to church. It's not about any of that stuff. Those things help. But at the core of it is the real question is, will you give up your life so that you can have the life of Jesus Christ living in you? That's the cost and that's the reward. I want to close with this story. It's called, I am a soldier of Christ. It's about a boy named Roy who was 15 years old. The teens could tell that the shouts and chanting were getting closer and closer. An older teen looked nervously at his friend. The Muslims are coming. We'd better hide the kids, he said. Others following his lead helped the smaller children find hiding places in the buildings nearby, and they hid themselves. It was January, a crowd of mostly Christian children and teenagers had gathered at a Bible camp in the island of Abel, Indonesia. When the camp was over, cars came to take the laughing and rejoicing children back to their homes, but there was not enough room in the cars for all, the, all of the kids. So three men went to the local village to try to rent additional transportation, but they had not come back. The kids did not know, but the three men were actually jumped by the mob, and one man was stabbed to death and thrown into a ditch. Before long, the mob had reached the university. They found many of the teens and forced them out of their hiding spots. Roy was forced from his hiding place and made to stand before the mob. He was 15 years old. They threatened him, renounce your Jesus or we will kill you. Roy was terribly frightened. Though trembling, he answered, I am a soldier of Christ. At this, one of the Muslim attackers swung his sword at his stomach. The sword hit the Bible that Roy held and ripped it open in his hand. The next man's swing sliced open Roy's stomach, and his last words were Jesus. The mob dragged the mob dragged Roy's body out and threw it in a ditch. Four days later, his family found it. Even though they were racked with grief, Roy's parents stood proud of their son, who stood strong in his faith to the end. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. God, everything inside of us calls out that we want to control our lives and we want to be in control. We do not want to be the biggest loser and give them up to you. Because we have hopes, we have dreams, we have things that we want to do. You might want to use those things in it us. But God, you might have different plans. So I pray that right now you would show each one of us where we're at. If we're truly willing to lay down everything we have to follow you, or we just want to hold on to our God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your truth. Give us the strength to be your disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, John.